To begin our vector practice, you will need to download this file that's been shared with you from your teacher and add it to your own Google Drive so that way you can open it in Citrix. So I'm in Citrix, I went to uh, Photoshop and then File Open, navigated to my own Google Drive and I opened this document. So I'm going to start off with number one and zoom in, Control or Command Plus, depending if you're on the Chromebook, Mac, or PC. And we're first going to take a look at creating a purple rectangle. So we're looking at some of these basic vector shapes that we will be using to make our own character design eventually here. So the rectangle tool is the first tool in this drawer for our vector shapes. Up top of my options bar then, I have options to change the color. So I'm just grab the color purple here. And you can go through to any of these different folders and find colors that you like. But try to follow the directions with the colors it's asking. And I'm going to click and drag, and you can see as I'm dragging, I'm getting a blue path around the outside. No fill yet, but once I let go, the fill will show up. Um, you might have a property windows that pops up here that you can see there's the fill. If I wanted to, I could also change the stroke, and I can change the weight of the stroke. You'll also see these features and settings up top here in your options bar. A little more minimal though, there's a few more options like the way that the corners round and, and such. So you might like that properties panel. Okay, the next one I'm going to move on to is to create rounded rectangles. Now, these vector shapes are all shapes that are based on basically a mathematical algorithm that draws this outside path. And these vector shapes are scalable. So I can make them really small and really large and back and forth, and I'm never going to lose quality because it's based on that mathematical path that differs from what we call raster or pixel-based images, like a photograph, that are based on tiny dots or pixels that create the image. And if you were to shrink an image that's a pixel-based image and then expand that again, you're going to lose quality. And so that's nice thing about vector is that it's what you see, for example, in logo designs. Um, if I was, say, the designer for FedEx, my logo for my company needs to be able to get tiny and fit on a business card, but I also have to be able to expand it to fit it on the side of trucks and airplanes and billboards. So it helps with scalability without losing quality. It also creates this nice flat look that lends itself well to things like certain kinds of illustration design and logo design. Okay, so moving on to number two, we're going to look at the rounded rectangle. It's asking to create three rounded rectangles, increasing the corner radius each time. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder. I'll make a folder for my rectangle one, group one, collapse it, and now I'll click on group two. I can change my color. Let's go for a dark blue. And on the top right hand side, you'll see in my options bar that I have different settings. Um, one of them is radius. So I'm going to put it down to say a 10 for my first one. Click, drag, and draw it, and let go. Great, now I've got a nice rectangle that just has the points taken back a little bit, but it's a very sharp rectangle for the most part. Now I can go ahead and click back to group two to deselect that rectangle. I could have also gone to select and then deselect layers as another way to get off of that. Because if I were to still be selected on this, and let's say I go, all right, I want to change my color for my next rectangle, because I'm actively selected on that existing one, I'm changing its color, which can kind of be frustrating. So again, I can either click back to my group to deselect, or I could go to select, deselect layers. A little longer route to go that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo for a second because I like that dark blue. All right, so back on group two, change my color to a slightly lighter blue, and then I'm going to increase my radius, let's say to a 30 or 35 this time. So I can type in here manually or I can click and drag over the word and then click and drag. And you can see this time the corners are much more rounded and getting um, softer and more curved. Okay, I'm going to click back again, change my color one more time so you can see the next one. And let's increase it. Let's go to maybe 60 this time. Click and drag and draw. All right, and you can see much more rounded this time, almost like an oval. So you can get some really nice, um, more rounded shapes by using that rounded rectangle tool. I'm gonna scroll down here to number three, creating overlapping circles. For number three, we'll be using the ellipse tool, which you'll find in the drawer with your other shape tools as well. And we'll set it to a new color. I've made a new folder here, again, clicking in that folder button. And if I click and draw, you'll see I'll get an oval, but if I hold the shift key, I'm going to get a perfect circle. And 
that wasn't quite perfect because Citrix did not agree with me there for a second. There we go, perfect circle. Next, um, I wanted to cover some of the uh, properties you'll see up here. So if I hover over this little button in my options bar, you'll see it's called Path Operations. You'll also see the Path Operations over here in your Properties panel. Um, and if you don't see that Properties panel, you can always get to that window from going to Window and then Properties, and that'll bring it open. So you can see some of those same features there. So if I change this now to Combine Layers, and let's say I wanted to make a Mickey Mouse here. Hold the shift key and let go. You'll notice that that all adds on to one layer now over here in my layer palette. Same thing, shift key. Now let's say maybe I drew it not in the right spot exactly. Still holding my mouse click, I can grab the space bar and it's being a little jumpy on me here on, on Citrix, but it should let me move it. It's not happy with me. Let's go ahead and undo. It should be working here. Click and hold, drawing shift, and then the space bar. Funny, it just worked for me. There we go, kind of jumped there. It's being a little bit glitchy, but it should let you move it and then let go. So it's now all on one piece. Now let's say that I want to draw a moon next to my Mickey Mouse. Well, I can make that crescent moon out of two ellipses again. So drawing again with it set here, let's go to new layer. And now, um, if I were to draw another ellipse, maybe I want to switch here to subtract front shape. Now it's going to jump like this. Just undo for a second. Command Z. It'll keep you on subtract or exclude overlapping, but it will put you back to having the fill inside of the circle instead of the outside. And then I can draw my next ellipse. Space bar. Again, should let me move it. Okay, we'll call that good enough. There we go. And you can see it cut off all the stuff on the front and now I've got that perfect circle. Now, oops, cancel. I can draw another couple of circles that overlap. Oops, command Z. Let's make sure I set back to clicking on my new layer and a new layer here. There we go. So just go ahead and experiment. and see what happens when you change these various settings. And now, of course, it doesn't want to work for me. Um, but you can work with this and change out the different settings. So now if I'm on exclude overlapping or only showing the intersecting, and if I were to draw, there we go. Now you can see it's only showing up the middle, so that could be maybe a leaf or uh, a feather on a bird or something. So you can see you can make some interesting shapes out of these existing circles. Let's go ahead and take a look at I'm going to use my space bar to move, and it was not happy with me. Let's edit, undo. There we go. Okay. The space bar usually lets you move over, but right now my Citrix is not being happy with me with that. So let's just slide over. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to use uh, another group here, and we're going to create some polygons. Another group, polygon tool right down here. And we'll change the sides of our polygon. So I'm going to pick some new colors here. Let's say green. I'm going to start all the way to the bottom with three sides. So you can click and drag on this little word here. See that little finger? You get a nice triangle. I can increase it. Let's say maybe to four sides. It'll give me a perfect square. So you can see it's giving me equilateral shapes that have the same, um, same size on all sides. And then let's go to eight. I can get an octagon. Now, if I hold the shift key, it should put them perfectly level or perfectly at 45 degree angles. It's not going to do anything about keeping the sides equal because it already does that for it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Again, my space bar is not working. Let's take a look at the next question here, asking us to create some vector lines with varying widths, different widths for these. Another new group, question five, group five. So our line tool is down here. And again, I can change my color. Let's go maybe with some red lines this time. So you can see there's my fill color. Um, the other option I have is stroke color, not very helpful on the lines. I'll show you that on the next one. Uh, and I can change the weight of my line. So I'm going to go ahead really small and start with just maybe a, a four or five point line and click and drag. Now I can increase the weight again. Let's go with maybe a 10 point line, click and drag. And you can see each time it's getting just a little bit thicker. 
Let's go for me a 25 point line this time. And let's go one more. Let's go for a 40 point. So you can see the bigger it gets, the more and more it starts to just look like a regular rectangle. Um, but it's nice to give you some varying width. This could be nice to create patterns, to create branches, to create stripes potentially on a character or an animal. And so that's a nice feature to know about. Let's jump ahead to our last one. I'm going to make a new group here and slide over. And this time we're going to take a look at what's called custom shapes. Now custom shapes, I'm not a huge fan of, but sometimes they have a use. It's this blob looking tool right down here. Now up top of my options bar then, let's get set the fill to black as it asks. And this time I'm going to give it a stroke. And let's say a red stroke. And we'll change the size of that stroke just a little bit thicker so we can see it. We'll go just a couple of points. It really jumps from like nothing to a lot. <laughs> So we'll go just something like that. And on the right hand side, then you'll see that you have all of these options for your different types of shapes. So you could click into here and find a shape that you like. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these lovely little flowers and click and drag. Now the shift key will keep it perfectly constrained. And you'll notice that I see all these vector anchor points and paths that show up. Again, that's just an on-screen guide. If I were to click off of it, you can see that now it's giving me that shape filled with black, but now I have a nice little red stroke on it as well that just adds some style to it. Once you're done with this, please go ahead and save um, and save that PSD for yourself. Then go ahead back into Save As, save it to your computer, save it to your Google Drive. Make sure you save it to your digital art folder, and then you'll turn that into classroom to your teacher as a JPEG.